HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Powder donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken audio entertainment and information. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. You can check it out at audibletrial.com slash business growth. Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast continues to gain recognition as a great resource for aspiring entrepreneurs, small business owners, sales professionals, and uh, you know business leaders of all kinds. And that is because of the guests who join me to have a conversation. These are folks who have expertise in particular areas of business, and they share that expertise with all of you during their time with me so that you can you know, get the information you need, ideas, suggestions, you know, whatever it is that you are struggling with. So you can implement these ideas in your business, reach out to the guests to get more, you know, possibly one-on-one assistance uh, so that you can be more successful. Today is no different. My guest today is Greg Shepard. Greg is the CEO and founder of Boss Capital Partners. He's a serial entrepreneur, author, speaker, and angel venture capital investor with a legacy of building and running sustainable growth businesses. Driven by a transformational leadership style, Greg has spearheaded multiple company exits in the biotech, transit tech, ad tech, and martech space, winning various awards as a result. Most recently, he's been authoring a book titled Meet the Boss, the Agile Playbook for Startups, slated to publish soon. Thanks so much for joining me today, Greg. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. 
Well, I am thrilled to have you. I, I want to dive right into this, and I'm wondering if you would share with the listeners what uh, the North Star is. Sure. So what I did is I spent like 25 years, my own startups and investments, trying to figure out why the failure rate was so high. And so when I discovered that not only the failure rate was high, but what points it was, right? So you have different points in a business life cycle where businesses sort of fail. And one of the things I determined is that if we go all the way back to the very beginning, a lot of these startups were not looking at where they wanted to be uh, eventually. And so when I found out about this, I discovered the idea of doing a North Star. And so a North Star is something that you can see from anywhere and gives you uh, a directionally correct place to go as you build your business. So when you look at your North Star, you have what to start out with. And so the what is what is your business and that's description, feature, and benefit, right? So you're describing your business. <laughs> Now you also want to do that for your product. And the reason why I started this is because what I found out is that most businesses that are looking to sell their business to another company don't understand that your entire business is just a product to that other company. So what I mean by that is that other company, the acquirer of your business most likely has an existing base of customers. And they've already absorbed the cost to acquire those customers, the customer acquisition cost or CAC, that a cost to acquire those customers. And when they look at buying other businesses, they're trying to find businesses that match with the customers they already have and have paid for so that they can monetize that customer base. And so the what says, what is your business and what is your product? Uh, and, and this gives you a description of what, so that is description, feature, and benefit. And then who? And so this is who buys your product and who buys your company. And that is an ideal buyer profile for your business. This is another company that's going to buy your business and an ideal customer profile for the customer. If that customer profile aligns to the customer profile of your buyer, then you can design your business to be sold in much less time raising less capital and a whole lot less uh, dilution for the entrepreneur. Now, the problem is, is that you can't build a business and say, okay, I'm going to sell my business now and then just start selling it. Your business has to be designed to be sold the entire time from the very beginning. <clears throat> so if you don't have a North Star with a what is your business and who is buying your business, you're going to have a really, really hard time. And this is where a lot of companies fail. The next one is why. So why should somebody buy your business? Why should somebody buy your product? And that's problem, solution, and impact. And that's the format for that. Now, <clears throat> that stack of information helps you understand how to move this company along the path to acquisition. So I'll give you some examples that kind of make sense for people. So I look at a lot of businesses to invest in on a monthly basis, you know, between 100 and 200 deals a, a month. And a lot of these companies are raising, you know, they'll say, oh, we're trying to raise two, two and a half million dollars to build out the business. I go, okay, and where is that money going to go? And they say, well, we're going to spend a million dollars on the go-to-market strategy. This is the marketing and sales strategy. And I say, okay, what are you going to do during that process? What are you going to get? And they're, well, we're, going to, we're just going to get customers. So here's a company that would have spent a million dollars of investment capital that they gave away a percentage of their company for to get all the way to the point where now they have this customer base and then they go to try to find a buyer and then the buyer has a different customer than they do and that buyer doesn't recognize those customers and you can see the problem. So now they spent a bunch of money going the wrong direction, you can't undo that. So now basically they have to start over to go get customers that align with the buyer. Does that make sense? Sure. So when I looked at this concept of you know, how do I help more entrepreneurs succeed? And by doing so help with wealth distribution, this was the biggest thing that popped up is that a lot of these companies raise capital to grow or to move their business down the life cycle of a business journey and didn't think about the alignment of the buyer of their business the entire time. And so by doing so, again, they spend a ton of money that they didn't need to spend. They get all the way out 
and they can't find a buyer, so they have to reset and pivot. And when they do that, they have to raise more capital. And you know, every time you raise capital, you have to kick out the exit. And you get into this sort of, you know, just hamster wheel of raising capital, increasing the exit, raising capital, increasing the exit until the the acquirers target uh, for your acquisition acquisition don't don't meet the uh, the amount of money that you've raised and the return that the investors want, which is usually, you know, two to five times their investment. So you, you can see how these things get in these problems. You know, there's just, just endless problem of, of, of uh, this hamster wheel going round and round. And so the North Star was meant to do that. It's sort of like, you know, if you're going to try to cross the ocean and you're one degree off, off on your compass, you know, you're going to be on a different continent when you get to the other side. So having this North star that guides you the whole time and ensures that you're directionally correct is fundamental to the success of a business. Okay. So when does someone need to determine what that North star is? I tell people to do it straight away. I mean, when you sit down uh, and you, you, you're looking at, okay, I'm going to design a business you need to figure out who, what your North Star is right then, very, like as soon as possible. And, you know, the reason is, is because, you know, you wouldn't build a product without knowing who your customer is. I mean, nobody's just going to say, okay, I'm going to build a product. I'm not solving. When I look at businesses, there's two, there's somebody that's solving a problem or somebody that's taking advantage of an opportunity. And you wouldn't build a product without having one of those things already there, right? It'd be a waste of time. Yeah. So, naturally you have to do that early on right so why would you build a business without knowing who your buyer is same scenario your whole business is just a product to them so i tell people i'm like you you need to start this right now like you need to figure out right now what who and why uh your business to appeals to the customer and the buyer of your uh you know the acquirer of your business okay <clears throat> what would you say to someone who says, well, I'm not even thinking about selling my business. I'm just starting it. Yeah, I hear this all the time. I, I, I have conversations all the time with investors where they'll say, well, we don't need to do that. We're just, we're just starting a business. And I tell them two things. I say, if you are building a lifestyle business for yourself and you don't have a North Star, uh, the chances are you're going to be spinning around for quite a while. And you are the investor in your business. So you, everybody wants a return, right? So if you're building a lifestyle business and uh, you still want a return, well, what is that return? Maybe that return is a living, right? Something, something you live off or you want to eventually buy a house or something. So you have to have some return. And if you're buying, if you're building a business and you're getting investment capital, those investors don't give your money, uh, don't, don't give you money to invest in the business without a return. Right. So when an investor comes to you, there's they have in their mind, I'm going to make this much in this much time. That is my payoff for the investment. That's the whole concept of an investment. So when people say, you know, oh, it's too early or, you know, I don't know, I'm just getting started. I say, well, that's the perfect time because you if you start with the end in mind, then you are executing along the path that you've already designed. So it's sort of like I tell people, I say, don't let email run your life, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they, 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 you know, they'll log on, first thing they do is check their email and then their whole day is just in email. So the email is running their life instead of them running their email, right? right. And it's, it's the same okay. thing with your business, right? You mm -hmm. don't let your business sort of just, just kind of go run off, you know, and, and do, you have to guide it and you have to guide it within sort of like when you bowl, you know, how you have the bumpers, you know, you have like rails, this is the boundaries of my business. This is where I'm going. I want this customer, not that customer. So the ideal buyer profile is the buyer profile of the company that's going to buy your company. And the ideal customer profile is, you know, the ICP is the ICP of the customer that you want buying your product, which should be the same as the, as the buyer of your business's ICP. Right. If you do that, then what you have is you have a synergy sort of as you grow. And when you go to sell your business to that buyer, you can say, listen, I already know that we have the same uh, ideal customer profile ICP as you do. 
And therefore we can prove attachment, what's called attachment rate, which is whatever percentage of that uh, buyer of your business. Let's say that uh, Google, I don't know, you know, Amazon, whatever, uh, is gonna buy your, your, your product, your business, their ICP and your ICP need to be the same. Otherwise there isn't a synergy. And you don't wanna start that when you start thinking about selling your business because by then it's too late. You already have a whole bunch of customers out of ICP. Does that make sense? Well, it does make sense, but I guess I'm curious about how does someone identify their ideal buyer profile? I, I get the whole ideal customer profile that, I mean, but, but how do they know, how do they figure out what an ideal buyer would look like so then they can figure out what an ideal client looks like? Yeah, so typically what I'll do is I'll ask them to create what I call buyer stories and customer stories. Okay. So the way that these are formatted is I am X, I am somebody, I work for Y, and I want to, to do this so that I can do that, right? Uh -huh. So I am the director of marketing at you know, uh, whatever the name of the company is, and I want to have a piece of software that, uh, you know, solves uh, KPIs for me so that I can monetize my business, right? So businesses buy other businesses and customers buy products to either make or save money. That's, that is typically the way it works. Yeah. So if you find out that the business that, that is interested in your business is trying to make money, then you design your stories around that. So I am IBM. Uh, I am the CEO of IBM and I am trying to, uh, you know, solve a CRM problem for my customers so that I can have better retention uh, or so that I can grow my business or so that I can monetize my customers. And so you do typically like five of these stories. And in that process, you can see that you're identifying the business, you're identifying the person at the business, you're identifying the problem, the solution, and the impact. And as you do that, then you go back to your North Star and you say, okay, and that designs the information in your North Star. Now, when you go out and you get customers, you say, okay, does my customer profile meet the same customer profile as you know IBM in this scenario, right? So IBM's customer profile for you know, let's say CRM software is, you know, startups between, uh, you know, the range of 5 million and, you know, 500 million, or maybe between 10 employees to 50 employees or something like that. And so now you go, okay, that's the business size that I'm after. This is the funding size I'm after. So this designs your ICP. So basically you're trying to get a, a, a personality, so if you were, you know, going on a dating site or something, you would say, well, you know, I'm interested in people within this age and that age and like to go skiing and whatever. Uh, it's the same idea, right? So you're saying these are the customers we're targeting. These are the customers we want. And then all of your marketing and everything aligns with that customer, which is the same customer as the buyer of your business. Okay. I'm going to take a quick sponsor break and then. I have some more questions for you. Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast is happy to be sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information. They have thousands of titles to choose from, as well as podcasts, Audible originals, guided meditations, and more. One of my favorite audiobooks is Everyone Deserves a Great Manager by Scott Miller. For me, I love being able to listen to it anywhere and across my devices without losing my place. And I think you will too. So visit audibletrial.com slash business growth to explore the variety of audiobooks and programs for yourself. I can't tell you how many times I've seen businesses raise capital or, or uh, invest money, you know, trying to acquire customers. Mm -hmm. And then find out that the customers they've acquired are the wrong customers. So now they've yeah. spent that money they can't go back on. They've got a bunch of customers that aren't the right customers. So maybe the customers can't afford the product and then the retention rate starts to drop, right? They have churn and people start to cancel. Um, and maybe it's because 
you know, they just can't afford it for some reason or another, right? Yeah. And so you get into that, you get into that situation. It's, it's really, um, it's a really difficult scenario to get after once you've done it, you know, once you've got to that point. So, right. you know, so what I do is I spend a lot of time um, with my portfolio uh, companies on that North Star and it can get adjusted after you, you know, are building your business out, but it's fundamentally important that you set your, you know, it's ready, aim, fire, not ready, fire, aim. Right. Most people, they do ready, fire, aim, you know, yeah. oh, I'm starting my business. And then they go off and they start building their business and doing all that. And they forget the whole reason why they're building their business is to sell it and make money or to create income for themselves. And therefore you have to have a plan and yeah. the plan starts with where the money's going to come from. So typically I'll, you know, I'll tell them, okay, okay, well, let's talk about your customer's journey. The customer's journey starts out with who is your customer, yeah. right? Like who is the person you're, you're after here and then build the business around that. Right. And that is the fundamental, that's one of the biggest, biggest things that I have in, in that scenario. Um, shoot. I had a question for you and now I can't remember what it was, but it was, about that so so if someone is listening and they've been in business for you know five ten years and they never did this and now they're starting to think about okay or they're listening and they're thinking wow you know this is a good idea is is this something that they can do uh, sort of you know midstream so to speak yeah, I mean, a lot of times when I come into businesses that have already been, uh, you, know, you know, working for a while and what I'll do is I'll say, okay, let's stop for a second. Let's figure out what your ICP is and then we create segmentation. So we say, these are what's called in ICP and out of ICP. Okay. What you do is you sort of say, okay, let's really protect the ones that are in ICP and let's slowly replace the ones that are out of ICP. Mm. So when you go into a, a, a sale of a business, that business is going to say, I mean, you know, they do this, they may not tell you they're doing this, but I guarantee you they do it every time. And they'll sit there and say, okay, let me see your customer base. They'll say, how many of these customers will fit with my model? Mm. Basically the ones that are in ICP, you're going to get credit for. And the ones that are out of ICP, you won't get credit for. So they will reduce the multiple. So sometimes they'll actually segment it out and they'll say, okay, we'll give you five, five, five X or, you know, two X or whatever, depending on if it's top line or EBITDA on these customers and this revenue, but we're going to give you one on these customers and this revenue. Mm. Now, when you think about this, right, this scenario, this scenario, if you had known from the beginning that you were only going to get the high multiple on the customers that were in ICP, you wouldn't have spent the same amount of money to acquire the ones that are out of ICP that you did the ones in ICP. Right. Right. Like that's just ridiculous. So that's why you have to start with this right up front. You know, you have to say, who am I after? Yeah. Why am I after them? And then align to that. So part of the North star is to say, choose, you know, three to five businesses that you think would buy your business and then get to know them. Right. Like yeah. get to know who they are. Do they, do they make acquisitions? If so, how much are the acquisitions for? How do they do it? How many do they make? So you can uh, get an idea of their appetite for acquisitions. And then on the other side, who are the customers that they have and why are they making the acquisitions? Is it to save or make money, right? In some scenarios, it's to save money, in which case your customers don't even matter. Huh. I sold a business uh, a couple of weeks ago for $48 million that had $2 million in revenue. And that's because the buyer didn't even care about the customers. All they wanted was the software to sell to their customers because they were solving the problem for their customers. So in that case, it would be stupid for them to even invest a bunch of money in growing the business. Right. Because the buyer isn't even buying them for their customers. All they want to do is have enough customers to prove that it's solving the problem, that their customers like it. So there's three value drivers in every business growth, margin, and retention. And so those three things tell a buyer everything they need to know. Growth, people like the product. Retention, people continue to like the product and will keep it over time. It's got stickiness. 
and margin. You can do it at a profit. So when you do these three value drivers, you, you lean towards one or the other, depending on if you're trying to make, if, if your buyer is trying to make or save money. And so you do this all in North Star. And this really, really helps out as you move forward so that you don't spend money in the place, you know. So a, a lot of analogy I give to people is, let's say that you're building a house for a customer. Mm -hmm. And you don't have any idea who your market is. So you build a five bedroom house with five bathrooms and two decks and a loft and granite countertops and all this stuff. And then you go, okay, now let me go find a buyer. And then you, you come to find out that nobody wants five bedrooms and five bathrooms. They want three bedrooms and three bathrooms. <laughs> right. Well, you're not going to get value for, the, for what you've built. You're only going to get a value for what people want. So huh. if you don't start with the North Star, what the, the, you're going to be in a situation where you're going to be sitting there, you've overbuilt uh, or maybe you've underbuilt, right? For right. the buyer of your end of your end business, which is, Again, your whole business is just a product to the buyer, a good buyer, right? If you're, you know, a good buyer, what I mean by a good buyer is somebody that's going to pay you a high multiple for your, you know, for your business. Yeah. And a high multiple is going to be based on their ability to return the investment over a period of time. So if the buyer looks at your business and they see that you have five five customers that you bought that you've got that are really solid and you've proven growth margin retention for those customers. They have 5,000. Do you think they care if you have a hundred or 200 right. or five, you know, it doesn't matter to them, yeah. right? They're like, look, I already have the customers. I just want something to sell to them. So if you don't go through this process, this is a lot of people, they fail here because they, you know, they get in a situation where they build a house that nobody wants. And now they have to sell the house for an, a price that the market wants because they don't want the extra bedrooms. And now you've raised too much money. You take a down round or you end up selling for less. Investors are pissed. Um, the founders usually don't make too much on the deal. Yeah. Uh, or they continue to build. The worst scenario, which I see all the time, is they'll just continue to build. It's like crazy. They, they just keep <laughs> going and keep going and keep going, you know? Yeah, it, right, because they're not paying any attention. Yeah, so that, you know, yeah. they'll sit there and they'll build, you know, 40 of those houses I described and turn around and go, okay, let's sell them, you know, and then everybody's like, yeah, you know what, I don't want that house, but, you know, I'll take it if it's instead of 500 grand, it's 300 grand, I'll take it. Right. You know? uh, and so that's what happens, right? So you, huh. you know, these situations, they happen all the time, all the time. Um, and you know, wow. you're an investor, you kind of look at things as a win, tie, fail. Yeah. Right? So you see a lot of ties and a lot of failures because they don't understand uh, where they're going when they start out in the first place. Well, I really like this idea uh, of the North Star. I, um, I definitely think, I mean, for a lot of reasons. And, and one is that I, I think it helps people know like what to say yes to, what to say no to, as you said, you know, it keeps the guardrails. So it, it allows them to focus and um, not get distracted by uh, bright, shiny objects or things that really are, you know, customers who aren't relevant to their goals and, and, um, projects that aren't relevant, products, services, that kind of thing. Yeah. So even if you think about it with your podcast, right? Mm -hmm. You have a you have a, an ideal customer profile for your podcast, right? Right. And so right. the content that you give to them, you know, post uh, pre this call, you know, you briefed me on uh, who your listeners are and what you want right. to deliver to them, right? Right. So. You know, even in your podcast, think about if you didn't have a North Star, some direction, right. and, you know, these are the people that are listening and this is what they want to know. Right. And your podcast would be all over the place. Yep. So it's the same thing with the business. Yeah. I see it. I can't even tell you. I, I, I see it just about every time. And that's why, you know, I said, okay, when I, you know, went, this has been like 25 years of work to create this, uh, you know, boss, the business operating support system, which is part of the North Star is part of it. 
And the reason why I started with that was because I kept seeing this over and over. Yeah. You know, I've done 15 startups, you know, and I kept seeing this in the businesses I invested in and everything. And I even ran into it myself in early days. And I said, man, if somebody would have told me this, it would have changed my life, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, I was thinking, man, I can't believe nobody is talking about, like, this is a huge issue, right? Nobody yeah. is talking, I can't even believe that, that, that this hasn't come up. And uh, so I decided, you know, when I, when I kind of re retired from building businesses and decided I just wanted to give back by helping entrepreneurs, and I opened up Boss to everybody, you know, that's when I said, okay, well, I need to start with this North Star because this is, this is like the biggest problem with yeah. startups. It's, it's incredible how many, um, you know, you can see them, they're five years in, uh, they, you know, mortgage their house and, you know, use their 401k and take an investor money. And then they're sitting there going uh, at the last minute, it's horrible. Yeah. You know, so uh, they don't teach it in schools. I mean, I now teach it at a bunch of universities, but uh, and trying to get it to, to uh, spread out, uh, start with the UC San Diego down here, UCSD and a few other uh, UC San Marcos few schools down here, where I'm trying to teach these uh, students that are doing MBAs uh, in entrepreneurship to start with this so we can stop this from happening. But, you know, it's and that's why I do these podcasts and everything to try to, you know, uh, yeah. tell entrepreneurs, look, you know, let start with this. You know, it, it's one thing. It's one thing to say, you know, um, when somebody, you know, wants to accomplish something that you are aiming to accomplish this thing. And it's another thing to define that thing very clearly. Yeah. Right. You, yeah. In the process of defining it, you also are, are questioning yourself. Right. And, yeah. and really getting so, sort of a more visceral feeling about what you're doing and why you're doing and who you're doing it for. And it, it changes the, the direction of your business moving out into the future. And remember, you cannot take that back, right? You raise $10 million, you burn $10 million. You can't take it back. It's done. Yeah, right. You know? Yeah. Do you think people don't do it because, like, this is something I try and figure out. On the one hand, I think they don't do it because they just don't think about it. And then on the other hand, Sometimes it feels like they're afraid that they're going to miss out on revenue if they aren't all things to all people, which just makes it too vague and, and too unwieldy to be successful. Yeah, so I personally look for businesses that are an inch, what I call an inch wide and a mile deep. Okay. So those businesses that are a mile wide and an inch deep are the businesses that everybody sees because they're all going after a, a big range of things that everybody yeah. sees, right? Yeah. They're, they're hyper competitive. Uh, inch wide, mile deep usually come from people that have some subject matter expertise in a very, very little niche. And that niche is something that they can see through to. And that's much, much better much, much better. I mean, the, the businesses itself or the high multiples and stuff solve a, a, a big problem for a very select group. So, you know, what I tell people is I say, listen, you know, you look at the most successful businesses that are out there and like Apple, Steve Jobs said at one point, you know, the most important part of his job was not to choose those things to do, but to choose those things not to do. Mm. And if you look at, you know, in fast food, the most successful franchise is this uh, franchise called In-N-Out Burger. And all they serve are burgers, shakes, and fries. That's it. <laughs> and you can, in anywhere in California or the West Coast, you can be on a corner and there'll be a Burger King and a Wendy's or whatever and a McDonald's and all those different restaurants. And the only one with the line going all the way out to the street is in and out burger. Hmm. So what I used to do with my uh, management team is I would take them there. The people that work there are wearing white clothes. I mean, you're wearing white clothes in a fast food restaurant and <laughs> perfectly clean, right? I mean, they're ironed. Everything is perfect. The food always comes out fast. It's, they actually take real potatoes and put them in a machine and make the potatoes. The meat wow. is never frozen. I mean, it's like incredible, right? Yeah. And, and they can deliver a really high quality product at a, at a price that 
is the same as the fast food restaurants, but the quality is substantially better, faster, more efficient. It's a good experience all the way around. And that's because they've isolated what they do. That's yeah. what, and you don't see Starbucks making hamburgers. Right. Right. They make right. coffee. So if you're not focusing on, you know, the more you try to do, the less you get done. Yeah. So if you're not focusing on a bunch of things that are out of your wheelhouse, you can do a better job on those things that are in your wheelhouse. And so you see uh, a lot of times you see a, a range of different companies step outside of, of what they should be doing. And then they start doing a really crummy job at the things that they're supposed to be doing a, a good job at. So, yeah, right. You know, so the North star is about really refining your focus and staying in the boundaries of that. Now, if you are, you know, down the line, and then you say, okay, well, you know, um, this, this isn't working, then you can pivot, that's fine. But you can't pivot off of something that isn't there in the first place. Mm. So you have to change yeah. mid direction if you didn't have an idea of where you were in the first place. Right. You're supposed to make an adjustment. Huh. Right. You're just floundering around making, you know, decisions without any basis. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, that's a great point. That's really interesting. Yeah. So when I look at businesses, I say, okay, well, if you know who your customer is, then you can test it. And then you're like, okay, that's not my customer. Go back and design another customer. Try it again. Yeah. You know, you can figure out six months in that the customer that you had has high turnover. Uh, maybe it's because that ideal customer profile doesn't have the budget that you intended. So then you come back and you either change your product, change your customer, change your pricing, your go-to-market approach. So everything is focused on that North Star. That's why I call it the North Star. You can, it's the yeah. brightest sky and star in the sky. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really, really important. And, you know, for your listeners, I would highly, highly suggest that you start with that. Even if, you're, if you've had your business for several years, come back and, and, and design your North Star. And don't design it based on where you are. Design it based on what you want. Yeah, that's another, huge. Yeah, another mistake people do is they're five years down the line, they go, oh, and they design it based on what they have now. But that's not what you want to mm. do. You want to design it based on what you want, right? So they'll yeah. say, oh, well, we have these kind of customers. That's our customer. No, 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 no. Who is your ideal? The key there is ideal customer profile, not customer profile. Yeah. Ideal customer profile. Right, right. It is a huge difference. It, it, it really is a huge difference. And, and people, um, it's so, that's really interesting that you have to think about what you want, not necessarily where you are, because where you are, the customers that you have aren't necessarily getting you to goal. Yeah. Yeah. But you may look at your business and you may say, okay, well, you know, it's a software business. I specialize in software. So, you know, you want to have a 90% retention rate. So let's say you look at it and you're like, okay, we have a 70% retention rate or a 60% retention rate. And then you go, oh, my ideal customer profiles, the customers I have. I mean, now you're just d designing a bad future. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right. That's a great example. Yeah. That, uh, that, <laughs> that was pretty clear. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's really, you know, it's like that house analogy, you know? Yes, so I love that. Yeah, it's, a, it's very, <clears throat> excuse me, it's very common to people, you go into a business and sort of talking to them and then, you know, they say, okay, well, we've, we've designed our ICP, here it is. And, and then I say, well, how, what percentage of your customers are in ICP? And they're like, 100%. And then I look at the ICP and I'm like, so did you design this based on the customers you have or those that you want? Yeah. You know, and they'll say, sometimes they'll say, oh, it's, it's both. And I'm like, so a hundred percent of the customers you have are the customers you want. And then they're like, no. And I'm like, yeah. you know, so, <clears throat> you know, it's sort of like, it's pretty obvious when I talk about it uh, with people, they go, well, you know, that makes a lot of sense. It's pretty obvious. And, that's, and I'm like, well, yeah, the problem is that, you know, people just don't do it. Right. You know, they, they don't sit down and take the time to really 
figure out these things, you know, yeah. the what, the why, and the who. Yeah. Um, which really, and I can give you sort of for your listeners the actual step by step process that maybe this will help them. Okay. So, first, what I do is I say, we're going to do the what. So, you have one what for customer and one what for buyer. So, what is your company and what is your customer or your product? Sorry, your, your product. And that is description, feature, and benefit. And the way we come up with those is I say, I want you to write one word that describes your business. And then they write a bunch of words. And then we (laughs) circle some of those words and turn it into a statement. And now you have a description. Now I want you to do one word that describe the feature. And then you put them together and now you have a statement. And then you do the benefit. (laughs) And then you combine all three of those and that gives you your what. So... The why is the same scenario, right? So you're like, who is the person? What is their ICP? Why would they want to buy your product? Same thing, words, combine them together, you know, with some obviously filler words in between so it makes sense. Now you've got your what? And then you go to the who. And when you, when you end up, you have three very fundamental statements to steer your business. This is what we do, and this is who we do it for, and this is why those people want our product and our business. Mm. And those statements should be on your board decks. They should be uh, everywhere. People should be able to rehearse them and know what they are. You know, most companies, I like to take software companies and put them into four functional areas and everything sort of goes into those four functional areas. So on one side is uh, revenue. So this is sales and marketing and service delivery. These are the people that work with customers and get customers. On the other side, shared services, that's like operations and product and tech. And so you have those four functional areas. You split them in half and you have two that go to growth margin and retention, the top value drivers. Mm -hmm. Growth and retention would go with service delivery because they're dealing with customers and sales and marketing because they're getting customers. And uh, margin would go with operations and retention would also go uh, with product and tech. So... Now you've got these two core functional areas with the, with the two functional areas underneath each one of those. And those people should know the what, the why, and the who. Yeah. Because they're the ones that are actually going to bring in what you're after, right? If you're fishing and you want to catch a tuna and you catch a crab, you don't just go, oh, well, you know, I caught a crab, so I'm going to keep that. You know? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You, yeah. so you change the bait, you, you just throw the crab back and you keep going. Right. So yeah. it's, it's really important. A lot of people, you know, a lot of businesses that I look at, we work through this process and, you know, I turn around and, and they're like, yeah, so I want a tuna. And I'm like, okay, got it, got it. How many tuna do you have? And they're like, well, we have five tuna, but we have like three tons of crab. And I'm like, okay, Either crab is your actual profile yeah. or you've been uh, going after the wrong thing. Right. The wrong bait or, you know, yeah. that makes sense. Yo, completely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you have to look at that and ask those questions because that's how you get to where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be shooting for. Otherwise you just keep sort of rolling along and one day, you get to a, a point and then it's too late. If I'm understanding this correctly, it's, it's yeah, too late to do it. Yeah. I mean, I've written stuff on the North star for fortune Forbes entrepreneur Huffington post and you know, all of them, right? right. I've used the North star and boss for Congress people, Congress women, congressmen um, as a chairman um, you know, I've gotten the concept from Navy SEALs and special operations in uh, the Air Force first fighting wing. You know, I mean, this information has come from 25 years of research, thousands of interviews. Um, and, you know, this, this one, there's five phases in boss. This first one is critical. Mm-hmm. You know, it's if you're sitting there with a bow and an arrow and you see the target, once you let go of that arrow, it's in flight. So you need to make sure that you've got that thing aimed at the right target. It feels to me like um, this is one of those common sense isn't common enough sort of things, because as you talk about it, it makes perfect sense. And yet 
there are so many people, you know, founders, entrepreneurs, not doing this. It, you, I, you would be amazed that, I mean, I, I never see it. I, I mean, I don't think I've ever seen it actually, mm. except for the businesses that I, um, you know, invest in and, and work on. But outside of that, I don't think I've ever yeah. seen it. And so wow. it's, it's pretty, it's pretty obvious, but the fact that nobody does it is <laughs> just blows my mind, you know? Right, right. But, you know, exactly. To be honest with you, like, I guess to be honest with you, when I started building businesses, I didn't do it either. Yeah. You know? And yeah. I didn't learn about it until I really ran into it a couple of times, right? Where yeah. I trying to, you know, I, I realized you know, two years, three years in, I was like, oh no, I'm after the wrong customer this whole yeah. time. Spent all this money and put all this, and now I have to go backwards and I have to, I can't get rid of them because now my business is accommodated to the revenue that those customers right. create. So yeah. I have to actually replace them, which means that, you know, you're not really growing. You're sort of staying the same size, but you're becoming more healthy. Yes. And if you had done that in the beginning, yeah. you would have been building the right customers the whole time. And therefore you wouldn't have to stop and fix this. Right. Keep growing, you know? Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's a real, uh, I, I don't, it, it, I mean, I guess, you know, a lot of times I got to admit, I sit there and I go, oh, this is insane. Why are people not doing this? But then I talk about it on podcasts and on the news and, and write articles and all this stuff. And I never see it. So I guess, uh, you know, it's maybe it's not that common. It's easy to understand, but that doesn't mean that it's common sense. Yeah, I guess. I, I guess it's it is definitely one of those weird things that that, like I said, when you talk about it, it makes sense and and it's so clear. But it, you know, you have to be talking about it <laughs> because yeah. apparently, it's not the norm. Yeah, it's it's uh, fascinating, you know. Yeah, it's it's really fascinating. What's really amazing though is the outcome. When you get this fixed, when yeah. it's on target, you can really change your business. I mean, I remember I was doing a startup. One of the first times I learned about this, and I said, okay, and I had to go back and I had to replace about fifty percent of my clients, and it was a hit. Right, I had to basically you know, keep spending money on growth without actually growing revenue because I was just replacing customers. Right. And, uh, you know, in that time frame, um, you know, I really learned a lot and I was like, man, this is a serious. And then when I ended up selling the business and I went through the transaction, I saw them dissect my client base. I was like, oh man, am I happy I did that? Oh, you know, because they, yeah. they actually sat there and they said, look, you have, you, you know, this amount of revenue in ICP, we're going to give you 10x on that. You have this amount of revenue that out, that's out of ICP and we're not going to give you any value on that. Yeah. Right. And I, yet I spent the same amount on both of them. Right. Yeah. The customer, right. The cost of the customers, the cost of the customer. It's just the idea of knowing who they are and targeting yeah. them. So. Yeah. So when is your book coming out? It is uh, set to come out at the end of this year. So I, nice. I yeah, I was pretty excited. I, um, I've been working on it for, I think about four years now. And wow. um, I was assigned a contract with Forbes um, to publish it. And, um, you know, obviously because it's Forbes, uh, we, we are going back and reviewing a lot of the stuff. So it delayed the release, but, um, but it's going to be really amazing and, I'm, I really want to, uh, you know, it's built to help people like your listeners. Yeah. You know, the book and boss is meant to sort of allow people to sort of, as they read it, it's not this kind of, you know, a lot of times you read these books and it's like, Oh, it's really exciting, but you don't have anything you can do tomorrow. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm writing this in a way that you can sit down, you can read a chapter, you can sit down, you can use the book as a, uh, as a guide and say, okay, I read this chapter. I'm going to put this in place. That's great. You know, and then I'm going yeah. to put this in place. And, and, you know, does that make sense? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, you'll have to let me know when it's, um, when it publishes. So, you know, we can be sure to, to share that 
uh, with everyone. And I, I really appreciate the conversation, Greg, and, and the information. I think, um, as I said, and, and I really mean it, that uh, it, this is really important stuff and you explain it in a way that, that just makes so much sense. The examples that you gave, the analogies, just you know, really uh, help crystallize the importance of this. Um, North Star in, in you know, for all the listeners. So, will you tell them, you know, about your business and how they can find you? And sure, great. So, um, the my website is gregoryshepherd.com. So G R E G O R Y S H E P A R D dot com, and I put everything on there. Every podcast, everything I ever do is on there in hopes that entrepreneurs can go and learn for from everything there. So there are, there's just a ton of content and I usually put it in different ways. So there's video, audio, reading, however you, you want to mm. consume the information. Um, I have dyslexia. So for me, reading is harder. So I wanted to make sure that there's a range of different ways to consume the information. That's great. Um, so that's the website. Um, and then I also have boss capital partners, which is uh, our investment vehicle. Um, and in the website also, you can see places I'm speaking. Um, if you sign up for the newsletter, you'll uh, find out when the book is out. Awesome. Um, there's, there's art. I mean, you know, it's just a ton of information in there. Uh, a lot of stuff on the North star. There's these videos we call in 60 seconds, which is a 60 second video on what is the North star and, and what it's made up of, um, in light of this conversation. So you know, I would encourage people to go get it. It's all free and, you know, just knock yourself out. I, I hope that everybody is successful. Yeah, me too. That's really great. Well, you're definitely helping people figure out how they need to do that. So I, I think that is terrific. So thank you for thank spending you. time with me. Uh, listeners, thank you. The, this, you know, once again, was some great information. I, I really hope you're paying attention to this and thinking about your business and, and where you're at. Uh, and I would also like to thank our sponsor, audible.com. To get a free trial of audible.com and explore all of the audiobooks and programs available to you, just go to audibletrial.com slash business growth to sign up. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Full send with the driver? Check. Piercing iron through the wind? Check. Low checker, high spinner, flop to a tight pin? Check, check, and check. No matter what shot you need to pull off, there's one ball that's better for them all. The all-new TP5 and 5X from TaylorMade. With a newly redesigned dimple pattern, engineered for more distance, more control around the green, and better stability in the wind, it's the hottest tour ball in golf. So no matter what shot you face, there's one ball that's better for all. The TP5 and 5X from TaylorMade. Do you love news about LinkedIn, Indeed, Google, and just about every other recruitment tech company out there? Hell yeah. I'm Chad. I'm Cheese. We're the Chad and Cheese Podcast. All the latest recruiting news and insights are on our show. Dripping in snark and attitude. Subscribe today wherever you listen to your podcasts. We, we out. out.